Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to model finite elements in STAD Pro Connect Edition. In this video, we're going to be focusing on using parametric models to create a finite element mesh. We will now turn to our sample model that's already been started in STAD Pro Connect Edition. As you can see, we have several main steel beams and steel columns in this model, but it doesn't contain any slab information yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Geometry tab in the Workflow Page Control area, and then we're going to select the Geometry tab in the Ribbon Toolbar. Now, instead of making creating our finite element mesh directly in this environment, what we're going to do for this exercise is to create a parametric model to achieve a finite element mesh. So let's go ahead and first access that area of the program. Now, in the Geometry tab in the Ribbon Toolbar, we're going to find our plate tools and we're going to go to the parametric models option. Now parametric models are used to preview the final mesh state of the wall slab or panel before we decide to deploy the meshed entity into the remainder of the model. So we can visually examine several trials or prototypes before committing the one that we find most suitable. Now this method offers some advantages over the other methods of mesh generation in STAD Pro. First, it enables you to preview the final mesh state of the wall slab or panel before deploying the meshed entity into the model. Also, during the process of meshing, the program will automatically take into consideration existing nodes, nodes that lie within the boundary of the panel but are not chosen as corner nodes of the panel. And then finally, it allows for the definitions of lines on the surface along which nodes should be created. So you get a little bit more control. Now the first step into creating a parametric model is to go to your parametric models dialog over at the right hand side of your page and click on the add button. We're going to create a slab type of system and then we're also going to select this checkbox. This will allow the program to use the nodes and beams that occur on the inside the outer boundary as additional density points and lines. So therefore, when we create this, we can just create the overall slab shape and it will automatically be attached to the beams and columns that are within that slab boundary instead of having to create a separate panel for each bay. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK and then we'll start modeling. Now we still need to select the nodes in order, either clockwise or counterclockwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to select our first node and then we're going to click along the perimeter to identify the boundary. Once you've clicked your last node, you could either click back at the start or just right click to close your polygon. Next, we're going to be asked to specify some meshing information. We're going to go ahead and just select for now standard meshing, and we're going to prefer quadrilateral elements. We're going to enter a target element size, and then we're going to finish this off by clicking OK. Now, at the same time, we have the option to add an opening within this slab boundary. And let's go ahead and click on yes. We're going to select a polygonal or a circular opening and then you'll click OK. Now it is best to go ahead and use a grid to identify where your slab opening is going to be located. Now for this particular model I already set up a grid using the slab linear option. So we'll go ahead and select that now. Now, if you didn't automatically already create a grid for yours, you can go ahead and uh, click Create here and create a new grid. It just gives you some additional snap points in order to create that opening. Now, once you have that available, you can go ahead and start modeling any openings that you might have. And I'm going to have one rectangular opening. So I'm going to select my first grid intersection. And I'm going to basically just click around the perimeter and back at the starting point. And you can see how easy it was to drop an opening within. Now if we're done, we'll go ahead and click close and the snap 
node dialog. Now that we're taking a look at our mesh, we may want to play around with some of the parameters after you first initially create it. To add any changes, what you're going to do is you're first going to select the surface you want to change. Now, parametric models do allow you to create multiple different scenarios and then only commit one back to your model. So this is a great way to select different options. Now, we only have one parametric model, so I'm going to select this first one. And then I can come down here and make some changes. Like, say, for example, I want to change it to basic meshing. It's automatically switched me over to triangular. And maybe I want my target element size to be 10 feet. Once we're done, we can go ahead and click Apply, and then we can examine what the results look like. And this is a great way to kind of check different scenarios to see what the different parameters will do for you. Now, before you commit this to the model, you may decide that you want to add some specific points within your finite elements. You want some control over where the nodes are going to lie. Say, for example, I'm going to have a slab depression right along here. So I'm going to want to basically have a line of nodes that long, lines up along there, and I don't want any finite elements to cross that line to basically span on both sides. So I can add additional density points or density lines. So I'm going to come down here, and here's my two options. I'm going to say add a density line. So I'm going to highlight density lines, click the add button. Again, I'm returned back to the option of using a grid, and then I'm going to create a density line and then you can see how easy it is to control. Now this might be a great way to control if you're gonna have some type of slab depression where the parameters between one side of the finite elements to the other side might be slightly different. It's also a great way to maybe line up some lines where you're eventually maybe going to be placing some loads on this slab um, to help make that modeling and analysis process better. Now, if we're happy with the mesh that we've created, we are now ready to commit this to the main model. Now, if you're not happy, you can, of course, make any additional changes, or you can create other parametric models to examine what those would look like as well. I'm going to go ahead and commit this back to the, my, my model, and I'm going to click on the Merge Mesh button. And now you can see that my mesh has been sent over to STAD Pro. So I'm going to select my geometry tab and I can see if I go to my plate layout area that all those plates were created for me and then I can proceed on. It's also important to note that I have achieved proper connectivity between this slab and say the top of this column and the tops of these beams as we can see that everything's basically been segmented along the way. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.